All right, ladies and gentlemen of the YouTube citizens, y'all know who this is. This is your boy, Dash the and Find Out. <laughs> Back at it with another Throwback Tunes on another Thursday, and I am reviewing my Ghetto Report card by E40. So this is his ninth studio album, and this joint came out March 14, 2006. It was recorded from 2005 to 2006, and it was done under Warner Brother Records. He gonna mention that record label a lot. Asylum Records, BME Records, and Sick Riddick Records. So it was supported by two singles. We'll get more on those singles later. So background info. So obviously we talked about um, you know his first album, or well not his necessarily his first album, but his second album, The Major Ray. It was certified platinum, his only album that uh, achieved that goal. But my Ghetto Card was his best album in terms of. The charts and to some degree really getting him on the map mainstream rise that is. So he was somewhere up there with the in Major Ray album with that uh that's uh one single, I forgot what it's called. Uh Sprinkle Me, that's what it's called. Pause on that. But no, that's the actual name of the track. But let's move on though. So in early 1990s, he was a part of the Vallejo rap group The Click. Thanks to religion popularity of his independently released single, Captain Save a Ho, E-40 got his first major label signing with Jive Records in 1994. By the late 90s and early 2000s, E-40 been doing guest features on Southern rappers albums such as MP The Last Dawn by Master P, My Homies by Scarface, and Kings of Crunk by Little John and the East Side Boys. So there you go with that. And actually, before we move on, let me mention the producer. I forgot to do that as well. So, E40, who was also the executive producer, Little John, Rick Raw, Rick Rock, not Rick Ross, Rick Rock, Dope E with two O's, Bosco, and Studio T O N, Ton, T, capital T, lowercase O, capital N. I'm, that, that's how it's spelled. So, there you go with that. So, with E40 as executive producer, the album features production from Bosco's, and I already mentioned that already. Critics notice the influence of Southern Crunk sound for all music. Dave, David Jeffries remark, and I'm quote here, Little John seems to be adapting to the Bay more than E-40 is going south. Ryan Dunbar of Entertainment Weekly said the album, and I'm quoting here, speeds up Crunk's creeping, what the heck type of word is that? S-C-U-R-R-I-L-O-U-S-N-E-S. So, squirrelylessness, while Tony Down is violent, undercurrents in an interview with mtv news e40 described the title as a reflection of having and i'll quote straight a's across the board end quote and and then quoting again doing nothing foul in the game end quote in his music career the guardian music critic angus Beatty described opening track gay arena we can more in a second as and i'm quoting here one of the handful of truly experimental daring and generally awarily Flabbergasting rap tracks released so far this century in a 2005 profile E40. So that's a pretty crazy stuff if you ask me. Now in terms of the impact, so due to the success of, actually no, we get more of that later. We get more of that later. So with all that out the way, let's get on with the tracks. So there's 20 tracks. However, only two of them, I believe, yeah, it should be only two of them. Only two of them are skits. Which means either way, I can only give you a top. I can give you a top five, not only give you a top five. I can definitely give you a top five and not a top three. And actually, there's three skits, so I apologize for that. There's three skits. So here we go. The first track is called "Yay Arena," and yeah, that was the track that Homie was talking about. Next up is one of the two singles off this album, and actually, this is the leading single off this album. Y'all should know. Y'all should know what it is once I say the name of it. Tell me where to go. Tell me when to go. So yeah, there you go. Featuring Keek the Sneak. Next up is Muscle Cards featuring Keek the Sneak and Tough Talk. Followed by Go Hard or Go Home featuring the Federation. Next up is Gouda, G-O-U-D-A, in case you're wondering, featuring Be Legit and Stress Matted. Next up is Sick With It 2 featuring Tough Talk. Followed by the first skit off the album, JB Stump Down. Next up is They Might Be Taping. Followed by Do Y'all Hit Women. Do Y'all Hair Like This. Y'all as in right hand. Next up is Block Boy, B O I, featuring Miko and Stress Matter. Then we got Right Girl, featuring UGK and Joel Santana. And apparently there's some info behind that track. We'll look into that in a second, I think. I'm not 100% sure. But we're going to move on. 
Next up is get this is crazy. Okay, get the fuck on dot com part one. So that's a skit right there. Then we got the second single off this album, You and That, featuring T Pain and Candy Girl. Y'all might, y'all yeah, y'all might, might y'all should know that one. Next up is I'm the Man D A, featuring Mike Jones and Al Capone, followed by Yee, featuring Too Short and Butter. Then we got Get the Fuck On dot com part two, which is the third and final skit off the album. Then we got Just Fucking Without the G but with the Apostrophe featuring Bosco. Then we got Gimme Head G I M M E featuring Al Capone and Bosco. Then try number 19, She Said She Loves Me featuring 8 Ball and Bun B. And then we got Happy to Be Here featuring DD Artist. Alright, so with that out the way, let's get on with the first single, which is Tell Me Where to Go. So yeah, y'all know how that goes. Drake came out February 1st, 2006. It was recorded in 2005. And yeah. There you go. And it was produced by Little John, obviously. And this the this is actually the first thing to kick off the hypey, H Y P H Y hypey movement on a national level and popularize the phrase "Ghost Ride the Rip." So yes, this is the song with that originated the whole "Ghost Ride the Rip." Yeah, that joint right there. The song sampled "Dumb Girl" by One DMC. So that's interesting. The song is featured in the 2007 Xbox 360 video game Dev Jam Icon. E40 is a playable character in the video game and provides his own voice and likeness. It also appears in The Fugitive, a season 4 episode of scripted comedy series Brooklyn Nine-Nine as well. And yes, there is a music video for this as well. So let's see, a little bit of background info on this. So the, there's a black, it's obviously a black right music video for this one. Produced through production company Immigrant Films. And it was directed and edited by, by Bunny Gourley and licensed by cinemagrapher David Classen. Filmed at the abandoned 6th Street Station in West Oakland. It features cameo appearances from D Shot, Dem Hood Stars, Haji Springer, Too Short, Little John, Rick Rock, The Federation, Battle Loco, Little Scrappy, Jay Valentine, Mr. FAB, Big Rich, Tough Talk, The Crest Creepers, Frank D, and The Architects. Tough dancing crew with choreographic by Jarrell Bay. So wow, that's pretty crazy right there. That's pretty crazy right there, if I do say so. It's around. In 2016, director Dante Ariola and cinematographer, I probably pronounced that right name that word wrong, but whatever. Chris Sues, S O O S, recreated the music video for a Beat Studio Wireless headphone commercial, also titled Inset 2. Tell me where to go. Starring Golden State Warriors power forward Draymond Green and feature E40 and cameos by Green's then Warriors teammate Ian Clark, Brandon Russ, and Sean Livingston, as well as Oakland natives Gary Payton and Brian Shaw. The 90 Seconds version also features Keith the Sneak. The spot is one of the three that earned Ariola a DGA Best Commercial Director nomination in 2017. So that's pretty cool. And of course, there's a bunch of remixes. So, the official remix featuring a new verse from E40 and features Kanye West, Ice Cube, and the game. The Super Hypey remix includes the features. Wait, what type of. Like, <laughs> let, let, here's what it said The Super Hypey remix includes the features. Duh. I'm dead serious. That's how they word it. The entire Hypey roster. It features Too Short, Be Legit, Clyde Carson, Tub Talk, Richie Rich, Sean Quinn, The Federation, Hood Stars, Messy Marv, Mr. FAB, Yuck Mouth, Big Rich, PSD, J Diggs, and Rap Group Ballast. At the start of the song, E40 proclaims RIP Mac Dre. Dre is supposed to be on this one, baby. End quote right there. Referring to rapper Mac Dre, who is considered the originator of the hyping movement. Oh, so that's new. That's new info right there. Another remix was done by Chingo Bling entitled Tell Me When To Go Remix from the album They All Want Him But Who Can not Afford Him. Another popular remix was done by producer Track The Maddox entitled Tell Me When To Go Track The Maddox Remix released in February 20, 2006 on his independently released compilation The Spring Progress Report. So that's interesting. It did make the charts. It was 35th on the US Billboard Hot 100, 50th on the US Popular 100, 37 on the US Hot RB slash hip hop songs charts, and 8th on the US Hot Rap songs charts. And it was certified gold in the US with 500,000 copies sold. This is just, and I, again, this is just the single. Next up is You and That. So, this is the song featuring P, uh, T Pain. Talking about You and That. Ooh, wait a minute. I tried to how to go. You and that booty, that joint right there. So yeah, another dope song right here, another popular song actually. Joint came out May 
second, 2006. This was recorded right in 2005. And yes, there's a music video for this as well as Little John and Cat Williams make a cameo appearance in the video. So, now here's a little bit of interesting news. A remix was released in early August with Joel Santana Snoop Dogg Little Flip. It was featured on a Amp mobile commercial. Although it is considered a West Coast rap song, the song's beat structure incorporates typical Southern hip hop snares, as well as Little John's signature crunch tips and whistles. So that's pretty interesting as well. The track is credited to have popularized the use of T-Pain as a hood singer on hip hop tracks. So yeah, this is the track that put T-Pain on the map right here. So wow, a lot of people were put on the map because of this album and because of the singles off of this album. So, look at the charts. This single was 13th on the US Billboard Hot 100, 11th on the US Mainstream Top 40, 17th on the US Pop 100, 8th on the US Hot RB Slash Hip Hop Songs Charts, 4th on the US Hot Rap Songs Charts, and 3rd on the US Rhythm Charts. By the end of the year, 2006, it was 52nd on the US Billboard Hot 100, and 4th on the US Rhythm Charts. And it was platinum in the US with 1 million copies sold. And again, that's just the single alone. Alright, now let's look at the tracks. Best tracks off this album for us to first. Do Your Hair Like This is the worst track off this album, only by comparison, mostly. The tempo is cool, the melody is cool, the bass is just straight, it needs way more of it. The kick is cool, the snare slash clap combo is cool, overall the track is cool. Next up is Block Boy. The tempo is cool, melody is cool, no bass, that's going to be a theme. The 808s are cool, the, the existence of 808s, that's going to be a thing as well. The claps are cool, that's going to be a thing as well. Overall the track is cool. Next up, she says she loves me. Tempo is borderline straight slash cool. The melody is cool, no bass. 808s are cool, and the snare is excellent. Overall, the track is cool. Then we got Yeet. The tempo is cool. The melody is borderline cool slash really cool, no bass. The 808s are cool. The claps are borderline cool slash really cool. Overall, the track is cool. Then we got They Might Be Taping. The tempo is borderline cool slash really cool. The melody is cool, yeah, as usual, no bass. The 808s are cool, but should bang more. The snare is really cool, though. Overall, the track is cool. Then we got Go Hard or Go Home. The tempo is really cool. The melody is cool. The 808s are cool. The snare is really cool. There's some beatbox into this as well, which is cool. Overall, the track is cool. And again, no bass. I'm not going to mention the bass until I want come across another song that actually has a bass in it, if that's a thing. But let's move on. And it is. Next up is Right Girl. Tempo is borderline cool, slash really cool. The melody is cool, but lackluster. The 808s are borderline cool slash really cool. The snare slash claps combo is cool. Overall, the track is cool. Then we got Muscle Cars. It almost sounds like Tell Me Where To Go. It almost does. The tempo is really cool. The melody is cool. The 808s are borderline cool slash really cool. Same with the claps. Overall, the track is borderline cool slash really cool. Then we got Sick With It too. The tempo is really cool. The melody is borderline cool slash really cool. The 808s are borderline cool slash really cool. The claps are cool. And then there's like another first, another clap slash snare combo in this rest. So there's a clap. And then there's a clap snare combo as well. That one is borderline cool slash really cool. As is this track. It's borderline cool slash really cool. Then we got Just Fuck It. The tempo is borderline cool slash really cool. Same with the melody. And the kick. And the snare. Overall, the track is borderline cool slash really cool. This is one of the three tracks off the entire album where the beat sounds totally different from everything else, by the way. So let's move on. Next up is You and That. The tempo is really cool. The melody is cool. The 808s are really cool. The claps are cool. Overall, the track is borderline cool slash really cool. Then we got Happy to Be Here. The tempo is cool. The melody is borderline cool slash really cool. The bass is cool. The kick is really cool. The snare is really cool. Overall, the track is borderline cool slash really cool as you constantly hear her singing that title over and over again that I'm just happy to be here. You're going to hear that throughout the entire track. And this is one of those three tracks that sounds different from every other beat, rather, throughout the album. All right, let's get on with the top five tracks off the album. And the fifth best track off this album is the third track that sounds different from everybody, every other uh, track in terms of the beat, that is. And that is Gimme Head. The tempo is cool, the melody is really cool, the 808s are really cool, the claps are borderline cool slash really cool, overall the track is really cool. Next up, Gouda. The tempo is really cool, same with the melody, the 808s are cool, the snares is really cool, overall the track is really cool. The other best track off this album is I'm the Man. The tempo is really cool, same with the melody, and the 808s, the claps are cool though, overall the track is really cool. Second best track off this album is Yay Area. 
tempo is really cool. The melody is borderline cool slash really cool. The synth bass is the same as well. The 808s are really cool, but you could use more of it. The claps are really cool due to the reverb, I'll be honest. Overall, the track is really cool. And without question, the number one track off this album is Tell Me Where To Go. The tempo is excellent. The melody is cool. The 808s are excellent. The claps are really cool. Overall, this track is really cool. So, yeah. Tell Me Where To Go, without question, is the best track off this album. All right, let me give you guys some professional ratings. All Music gave it a three and a half out of five stars. Robert Cuscall gave it three stars. Out of what? I have no idea. Entertainment Weekly gave it a B plus. The Guardian gave it four out of five stars. Hip Hop Dance gave it four out of five stars, as did OK Player. Pitchfork gave it a 5.6 out of 10. Grab Reviews gave it a seven out of 10. Rolling Stone gave it three and a half out of five stars. USA Today gave it three and a half out of four stars. So, in terms of the impact, due to the success of Tell Me Where To Go and hypely themed songs on radio and MTV, the East Bay Express and Oakland Tribune speculate that My Ghetto Report Card would become E-40's mainstream breakout album, and they were correct, to be honest. By May 20, 2006, Jim Harrington of the Oakland Tribune observed that a concert sponsored by local radio station Rile 94.9 Crown E40 as the new king of hip hop. I don't know about hip hop, but rap maybe. I don't, I don't even know about that, but let's move on. Writing for the Oakland based East Bay Express, Rachel Schwann listed the album among the best of 2006 and called it the most elegant in a spat of hypey albums released this year. So, what do I think about this album? Okay, so this album is better than in a major rap. I'll, yeah, I can co-sign that. It is better than a, in a major way. If I was going to rate this album, I would give it a 4 out of 5. I would download it and keep it. You know, the thing is, a lot of the beats sound similar. Obviously, he got his theme. But, you know, they sound extremely similar with the exception of three tracks. I already talked about what they are. And, but despite that, they sound cool, though. Nevertheless, they sound cool. I wish they were more bass. I wish they had a bass to go along with the 808s or something along those lines, or the 808s had more bump to it. But, and then there was a lot of claps. There was a lot of claps on this joint as well. But despite all that, it's still a four out of five. I still recommend you download it and you keep it. It's still a good album, if you ask me. And I'm gonna call it a wrap. So, with all that said, y'all know who this is. This is boy, New Jack Aspie, aka the new Stephen A. Smith, saying peace out, y'all, and I'll see y'all next time. Yeah.